Yo, what's going on guys? And today I wanted to do a video on the top international players and shout out Hoops Hype for this. Link to the article is in the description and that is going to be a great, great resource if you guys don't follow the NBA regular. Hoops Hype is great, kind of like the NBA Bible, some people call it. So I want to tell a quick story. I went to the NBA scouting combine this year as an NBA credential reporter. I do plan on going again this coming scouting combine. I hope this becomes a regular annual thing. Hopefully the NBA lets me go again. And I also attended the NBA Summer League as a media member. So during the first Wembenyama game, we went to go watch me and a, another journalist who I actually live with now. And we ended up, you know, it was super packed in the media center. We ended up sitting next to a guy who works for, I'll say the Boston Celtics. I'm not going to say it, who pretty high up in there. And I actually met Brad Stevens. I didn't sit in my buddy talk to him. I, I don't fan addict. Those people aren't going to really help me get a job because they're too high up there. I need the lower guys like the guy I talked to. And this guy told me about Nikola, Nikola Topic, who is basically the best guy coming out of Europe. Everyone's calling him the next great European player. And he told me about this guy back in, what, July, saying like, be quiet, keep him. I've always sent him like little, every time I see Nikola Topic's name pop up on the internet, I've been sending it to this guy on the Boston Celtics, being like, man, dude, it's not a secret anymore. And he said, he's been following this dude for like five years. So a little moral of the story. And let's just get into it. This is gonna be like Nikola Topic, Zachariah, Someone tell me how to say this. Rashad. I'm just, I can't even say it. Zachariah is what I'm going to say. And then Juan Yunez. Also, Juan Yunez went from being a second round pick last year to now probably being a first round pick. I'm not even kidding, guys. Like he wasn't. Alex R at preseason was being ranked as the number one guy, especially after that game against the G League Ignite. But now I think he's kind of a top 10 guy. So we're going to go in and first talk about Nikola Topic. Tell me, tell, someone tell me down below if I'm saying that correctly. That's how I was told, Nikola Topic. But even the guy with the Celtics told me he doesn't know if that's correct. I'm Serbian myself. My grandfather was born in Yugoslavia. I mean, my my whole family from my dad's side. I mean, it's either Italy or Yugoslavia. I'm a Sephardic Jew. So this guy is Luka Doncic mixed with like Ricky Rubio. He is about what i think is six five last time he might have grown with these these european cats i'm pulling it up right here nikola topic is a guy that he had absurd stats like the stats on this kid he's six six 201 pounds i'm saying right here and let me just pull up his his domestic and his international stats shout out out pro ballers he's averaging right now 18.8 points seven assists one and a half steals and his his steal numbers years before that's what caught like it off so the last couple of years he's been averaging over steals a game last year he averaged 11 assists a night while scoring 21 points and this is all in domestic league now if we go into european competitions like you know what i'm reading right here is his stuff with the with the domestic adriatic league now when we go over to the international competitions like euro he's this past year with you um with the under 18 serbian team he averaged 15 four and five okay and shot like the three-point shots the the you could argue big question mark on the kid as he is for the last couple of years like a below 30 percent three-point shooter but in serbia where he was averaging with okk belgrade or belgrade but belgrade it's he averaged 18 while shooting you know 80 40 percent from three and he's a good free throw shooter so this guy is basically yeah like he's got the ricky rubio like in passing touch but with also the luka Doncic kind of i would say like scoring ability zachariah dude people are huge on him okay yeah i've seen the french tony kukic you know comparisons a lot i've been seeing him on on twitter a lot of people are just going out and saying like this guy's next you got to be like watching him and for me, when I look at a guy like Zachary, you, the stats aren't going to pop out, okay? But he's playing for, in France, he left Tony Parker's club. And this looks like a recurring theme. A lot of guys are being brought up by Tony Parker's club. And then, because Tony Parker's club's competing for championships and stuff like that, they leave and then they go and have a great year and then try to make the jump. And it seems like it's just because they're not getting the minutes. But he's a guy who really, I think... There's two ways this could work out. He has the length and size to kind of be, I would say, because he is 6'10". I think kind of be worse comes to worse. 
He's kind of like a Rui, a Rui Hachimura. But if it all works out, he's got, yeah, that Tony Kukic, Richard Lewis game. Juan Nunez, right here, people are going to go ahead and talk about comparisons to, you know, Jose Calderon, Ricky Rubio, Raul Lopez. I mean, this guy is a protege when it comes to passing. Now, a lot of people are going to say, well, what about all the other Spaniards over the last years who were supposed to be, you know, great facilitators and they struggled to come over or even, you know, Alessandro, this is an Italian guy, but Alessandro Pajola, P-A-J-O-L-A. -A. He was like one of the best passers and stuff. Similar, you know, he's 24 and he never left Italy. And I mean, that's probably a choice, but it was kind of like the shot didn't come around. And Juan Yunez, I'm a fan of his and he's figuring it out and he's playing at the highest level. Okay. In terms of he left Um and he, before that he was in Spain. Okay. And the thing is, you have to understand he had to leave Spain to get these minutes because he was playing for Real Madrid and he's been in Um the last couple of years. And again, the three point shot isn't there, but it's the passing. I don't think he's as good as a passer, but he's a in terms of Ricky Rubio, Ricky Rubio, but like, I think Jose Calderon is a good comparison. I think he could be, you know, more of a late first round pick and second. Now, Hassan Yang, this guy is being compared to like Alperin Shiyun. And I didn't know about him until this article. And he is something different. Legitimately guys, something different. So Hassan Yang, I've, I definitely thought he was someone that intrigued me. 17 points, 11 rebounds, 3.2 assists, 0 0.6 steals, 2.8 blocks. Yes, I know this is in the Chinese league, but the kid is freaking 18 years old and he's doing that. Shooting 54.4% from the field. His team is six and four. He shoots 37.5% from three, 64.7% from the free throw line. All right. I, I've never, ever seen it's absurd. There isn't like much on him, but God dang, is he one of the most impressive species of bigs I've ever seen. And yeah, this guy got to go in the draft. If not, need to leave China and go to like the MBL first season. If they're saying he's a second round pick, I don't think he should be, but like he's a better defensive, better and better defensive player. And arguably a better rebounder than Alper and Shagoon and has that type of potential, which is absolutely rare. Also, I don't know if you guys see, the sun is killing me. And I'm gonna have to do something about it for the next video, but yeah, that's that's it, guys. Shout out right here. Yazi Gonzala, Frank Yerbina, and Albert DeRo on X. So they're the ones who made this article that we reacted to. So shout out to them and Hoopsite. But yeah, uh, pretty cool one, right, guys?